session. Our uh, speaker for uh, this presentation is, uh, let's see, John Beckenugan, who is Director of Academic Technology at the OU College of Professional and Continuing Studies. And John, I know I just asked you the correct, correct pronunciation of your name 10 minutes ago and probably just butchered it. So that just goes to show that uh, I'm having one of those weeks. So sorry about that if I, if I got it wrong, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it over to you for your presentation on selecting technology for successful online learning. Great, go ahead and share that with everybody. Uh, hello everyone, um, go ahead and it was going to work. There it is. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. John Bukenogan. Um, I'm the Director of Academic Technology here for the College of Professional and Continuing Studies at the University of Oklahoma. Um, it is my primary job to make sure that our uh, programs, both live and online, um, have access to our LMS, uh, which we are currently using as Canvas. And so I have a great working relationship with uh, OUIT and um, asked, they asked if I wouldn't mind doing a little presentation talking about um, some of the technologies that we use in our, our different courses. Now we have five uh, bachelor's degree programs and five master's degree programs that are 100% online. And we are kind of going through a, a Metamorphous. Uh, we were originally the College of Liberal Studies, and uh, now that um, we've gone through this change, we've added more uh, departments. Um, and with the new departments and new missions, we've got a new name now Professional Continuing Studies. So we're looking at adding more courses, both live and online, to our. So we're going to be looking at some of the tools, like I said, that we use. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the different types of technology and then as you can see these are some uh, basic examples that we use. Uh, you will see some of them before um, if you've gone to different conferences you should be familiar with soft chalk and so forth but some of these other ones you may not be familiar with like salsa it's specifically designed for canvas and I'm going to show a couple of things I know that Oklahoma State the university is getting ready to roll into Canvas, and I think uh, other institutions in Oklahoma may start looking at that. Overall, it's a great product, and um, there's a great community out there that supports uh, Canvas. And so I hope to be a resource for you, too. If you have any questions and such, you'll be happy to, to email me, and I'll be happy to work with those. So to get started here a little bit, what I want to talk about um, is three different types of technology that we currently use. I have something what we call our freestanding or standalone programs. It's, it's a product that you would purchase, you get your license for it, it stays on your desktop or your laptop, and you work with it, and then you'll import that material into, in our case, our LMS. Second one I'm going to talk a little bit about is specific plugins that you build that you push into your to your learning management system and uh, salsa is a program that deals with syllabus and I'll talk a little bit about that and why we decided to go with that technology and the last thing I want to take a little bit about is uh, web base and I say web base it's either you're going to log into a website you're going to use that facility or that information and either download it and import it into your course or there might be a possible of this plugging into uh, your LMS and so forth and then I want to give a shout out to Google Drive there's a lot of different things that we do with Google and um, they keep getting better and better they keep integrating things into the systems so much more. And so I wanna show you a couple of things that we have done to help us globally make some changes and some challenges and so forth. So first I'm gonna talk about is soft chalk. So soft chalk is a, as I said, is a standalone program. Um, if you go to softchalkcloud.com, uh, you'll be able to get an account. Now they have a great um, education uh, discount uh, and of course, they also build their, 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 you can do individual licenses or you can do an enterprise license based off of your FTE. Uh, we only did um, 2,000 FTE, even though 
you know, OU has a lot more than that. Uh, that number definitely helps our college, and so we're able to do a lot more things. What soft chalk is, it's kind of a hybrid of, it's its own standalone kind of course shell. It is a ability to design different items that you can have internally or externally into uh, an LMS or so forth. And you can see here, this is the website. Um, you can see down here towards the bottom, there's a list of all the different LMSs that it does plug into. Um, I've been using this tool for about, oh my goodness, 10, maybe 12 years now back when it used to be a freestanding um, system where it didn't connect to other LMSs. Uh, now they've added this whole cloud issue and you're able to interact and so forth. So what I wanna show a couple of things with soft chalk. First I wanna do is I wanna show you uh, the capabilities. You have these things called lessons and you can build out lessons as uh, activities, you can build lessons out as quizzes. These are all these micro little things that you can build and I believe there's 22 different items that you can do. And the nice thing about this is, is it allows you to export it out and you can drop it into courses. We use it in a couple of our undergraduate um, general studies courses. Uh, quick little things to use. Some of them have to deal with like vocabulary. So if there's a series of things that you want people to remember or to use, you can build these certain activities. We've gone as far as creating a little bit more interactivity using these items. The far side that you can do with soft chalk is you could actually build a standalone shell a fully integration, and we use that for our Navy at sea program. So when those sailors have to go out to sea and they don't have internet access, they can still take courses from the University of Oklahoma and it's all bundled together on one little package and it still gives them the interaction like it's on a website, um, but it is completely self-contained. And I can show a sample of that in a minute. Uh, but I just wanted to show some ideas of what the tool will do. So after you get an account and you're able to uh, open up the account, you get this thing called Soft Chalk Create. And in here, um, you have a lot of power. There's a lot of different things that you can do. You can create um, your own styles and profiles. So I created a University of Oklahoma. So every time I wanna build out either a course or I wanna use a particular uh, tool, it will always dump into my uh, Oklahoma template. And as you can see, there's a lot of different other templates that it can do. And there's more and more that, that it will provide. So let me jump over here. So this is where I've talked a little bit about activities. Um, as you can see, there's like 21 different assignments, 21 different activities that you can do. As of right now, most of these will work on a mobile device. Uh, SoftChalk is transitioning from Flash into HTML5. The new SoftChalk 11, which will be out at the end of April, should be 100% HTML5 compatible. So we don't have to worry about browsers like Chrome saying, I'm sorry, we don't have Flash capability anymore. But in the meantime, when that, before that comes out, I'm gonna show you a couple of things here. There's some nice activities that you can do. Uh, this first one here is this drag and drop. And every single one of the assignments or, or activities, uh, SoftChalk does a wonderful job of, uh, if you could see, where it has three different tabs. One of the tabs is how to. And they always give you, one, an example of one what it looks like online. And also they give you some wonderful step-by-step -step tutorials. So if you've never had to do it, you've never learned how to do it, follow the tutorials. It's very simple. So what this particular tool will do is you can... In this case, we're going to create um, a list of uh, column A could be, and in my case, it's going to be animals, and uh, column B is going to be items that I uh, associate with them. And so what I have here is just a notepad. Uh, I have dog, and then I use... Um, uh, the bar, and then I have ball, and I have just different things. So I can create a text, a notepad. I can put all these different items in here, turn around, and I don't have to manually enter these in unless I want to. So 
but I'm going to import it in here just to show you how easy it is to import. So boom, all the items are in here, they're imported or ready to go. So now I wanna take a look at what does this activity really going to do for me? So I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna save temporarily. And the nice thing about SoftChalk, it always gives you a browser view. So it's gonna turn around, it's gonna create it. See how it dropped it into my template that I created. So this is just the generic, uh, here's a listing as this is drag items from the bottom into the correct slots. So I can come over here and I'll say, okay, if a baboon, is it gonna swing? Notice that if you heard the sound, the little acknowledgement that you got it right. But if you turn around and do the wrong, it gives you the uh, you know, sound that you did it wrong and it drops back. And so this is a great vocabulary tool. It doesn't have to be a single word. It could be a sentence. Um, it can be definitions, but it's that repetitiveness with a particular assignment. Hey, I just wanna make sure that students can remember uh, different concepts and they do it in a fun interactivity um, that allows them to get excited uh, about successfully there he goes passing Ta -da. and so you can also tell to reset and there's other options that you're able to do with this tool I can modify I can set up, I can show answers if I wanted to. I can base on points. It can do a self-test, which is another great thing that will integrate with Canvas, for example, or most LMSs, is that you can set this up where if you actually want it worth points that go towards the grade book, you can set this up where it will dump that information into grades. Or if you just want to do it as a self-test, you can say, all right, well, there are seven answers, so I'm going to give them seven points. So every answer they get correct, you know, they'll get a point and so forth. Um, to show that that's just one activity that is available, uh, you can use here crossword. Same thing, I can put in different words, I can put in sentences. Notice it has that import list. So I can go back and create, I can go back to that same list that I created a minute ago and I can import that in there and then I can tell it to create the puzzle. So as it creates me the, the puzzle, um, it will do its very best. It's gonna look at all the words and it's gonna try to generate the, the most words with the, uh, the, the letters that are the most, yeah, based off the letters that are there. So notice that uh, three of them are coming up because it's the best uh, option. Now you can always click on generate a new puzzle and it will come up with another way. And it'll go to another, there's another one and here's another one and here's another one. So you can decide um, which ones that will be able to work and then whatever that's the one, then you'll be able to select it and then you'll be able to support that and push that out to uh, your course. Uh, but this is great. It's a good opportunity. And the nice thing also about this is that down the road, if you decide to change this semester after semester, you can either put in a whole new set of words or you can just come in here and click on, you know, create a new puzzle and I want it to be a different design. And so that's a great feature that Soft Chalk allows us to do. Word search, you know, there's another option here or seek a word. This time I have just a sheet, uh, a document that has just a single list of items. Same thing, click on here, save, and voila. Now it's created a word search. So here again, these could be particular vocabulary words that you want them to find. They're able to search through the system and find them. Um, this is it's just great at all levels. This is more than just K-12, this is good K-20. You know, there are lots of vocabulary words in English, there's history, science. Sometimes these activities make things a little bit fun to do so that it's not the same boring materials that the students might get time and time again online. The last, let's see. Another thing that you can do, which I've used in one of my courses, is you can create a jigsaw puzzle. And uh, under the option, there's areas where you can describe you want them to do certain things. So I've set this up as a, um, as a, a 
activity slash assignment in one of our uh, courses where I can choose the difficulty level of pieces. So I'm going to start off with, with four pieces just to make it kind of easy right now. And then I'll show you how you can change it. And then I'm going to upload the file here in a second. But what I've done in the past is have some type of question that they have to figure out what the answer might be. And then they put the puzzle pieces together and it gives them the answer. Or we've also done it where the puzzle piece may be a chart or a graph that they have to put together. And then based off of that information, they're able to solve the problem. So I'm going to run over here. I just have a couple of images. Um, there it is. There it is, space one. Okay. So I'm going to save and I'm going to put the puzzle on. And so this is the easy four piece puzzle. As I said before, you know, you can have much more information upon the top or you can have um, directions and such. And all they have to do is just currently they just drag, they drop, put the image together. Now they got the image. And then they like can say that we have graphs and charts in one of ours. So now they're able to see this. And then based off this information, they're able to go answer some questions either in a quiz or in another assignment and so forth. And let me just show you how crazy this can get. I'm over here and modify, change that to 81 pieces. Okay, save and so there you go. Look at that. If you're really in the puzzles, my goodness. I have no idea where that piece would start. But uh, you can see um, that, uh, you know, you could get very elaborate with this particular uh, piece here. And flashcards. Every, a lot of LMSs have their own built-in flashcards. The activity flashcards that are here in Soft chalk are pretty nice. Again, I'm going to go in and I can import from that original multiple activities document that I created. And then I can set up parameters. Oops, I want to edit, I want to save. And okay. So again, I can have either the term or I can show the definition first, whichever one I want to do. And then by guessing which one it is, I can tell it to show. And then I can move on to the next one, move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. Uh, we have a professor that uses this in the science course. And so he has all these great formulas. So you see the image, so you can put pictures or images down here. So you see the chemical equation for, you know, particular, uh, um, chemical, I drew a blank, I'm sorry, like ammonia or something. And then they would be able to say, oh, that's ammonia. And they'd click on show and they, oh yeah, I got it right. Same thing, you could have it worth points. You could have it as a self-test. You could have it as a part of the actual assignments that tie back in to Canvas or any LMS. So that is soft chalk to give you an idea, oops, don't save, uh, of what it will do. I will show you an example of, sorry, I have to change the system here for a second. Bring it up here. So this is an example of soft chalk as a self-contained unit that we have. So um, student would be able to click on this start here, which is an HTML start file. And then this is where they would get. So they would be able to go to introduction. And again, this would all be considered offline, but you could also have it online. But so they have the interaction, we've got PDF files, we've got videos that they can watch, we've got audio files. And so this is all 100% self-contained, all within the unit here. And so this is a pretty cool idea of what soft chalk and the power of soft chalk of what it will do. Plug into LMSs. Um, 
so about a year and a half ago, OU decided to move from Desire to Learn to Canvas. And one of the things that uh, we've learned over the time is, again, Canvas is a huge, wonderful platform. There's so many different things that you can do with it. There are so many ways of tapping into the system itself to allow you to do so many different things. And let me bring up, there we are. So if you logged into our, uh, our instance of Canvas, and uh, those people who are familiar with it, when you log in, you hit your dashboard where you get to see some different courses and so forth. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on one of the courses that I'm currently teaching. And it's one of our history courses. And inside Canvas is, um, they have a syllabus page and the uh, basic syllabus page, let me show you what it looks like. So inside Canvas, what it will do is, on this top part here is an, is an area that you can edit. You could put in with your own comments, your own information right up here. And then down over here in this area is every time you create an assignment or an assessment and it logs and it's for points, and it shows up in the calendar, it shows up here in the syllabus, and it shows up under uh, assignments or discussions and quizzes and so forth. What, um, what we found lacking in what the original Canvas was, was a better syllabus product. We felt that it didn't really help us integrate to what we really wanted it to be. So one of the things that we did is that we went out to the Canvas community and those people who are members of the, or who have Canvas, and if you've not been to Canvas community, you definitely need to go there. This is a great place to get resources, to get information. Everything from as an admin, to an instructional designer, to a teacher, to a faculty member. Uh, there's so much information here. People ask a bunch of questions, people get help. If you wanna change something in Canvas, there's a way, a process. You get enough votes, you'll be able to see, you'll see when the changes come place, come through. But this is a great, um, Great opportunity to show you that. So to show you what we've done in R, what Salsa does is Salsa integrates into Canvas where it allows us to create a platform where we can have our basic information that you would see in a standard syllabus. Um, it's here, we put in our outcomes, our resources, uh, what activities we're doing, basic breakdown of grades, our learning outcomes for this, and then of course our boilerplate um, teaching philosophies to our policies and so forth. And then down here, here's what I was showing you a minute ago, these are all active assignments, quizzes, uh, discussions, and all this interacts within Canvas. So what Salsa does is, this is a template that we have. We turn around and we created these areas that can be edited and areas that can't be edited uh, to give us a flexibility. Now what normally what, what Salsa is designed to do is that's for that faculty member or that teacher to create their own syllabus. And then I wanna walk you through real quickly how you connect it to your LMS and then how it shows up into, well, you already saw how it shows up on the canvas. But what we at, at my college, the college um, decided that we wanted to be able to provide a standard look and platform and also the information that the provost requires us to have in our syllabus. So my department, um, works very closely with uh, the Department of Academic Programs where they oversee the content, we oversee the technology, and we work together on trying to uh, help our faculty to streamline uh, the work that they have to do and the work that we do. So we're able to go in here and we're able to edit all the, most of this information. Notice this is not editable, which is fine because it's a standard information. Go into our outcomes, we can create more and more outcomes. 
We can turn around and add additional sections if we wanted to in this, which is great. Same thing with our resources. Uh, we've allowed an edited area of resources. You can add as many resources as you want. You can add additional, again, sections and settings for those. This is where we put our activities. Grades, this is great. This is where we go ahead and we put in different, um, you know, this is our assignment, you know, one, unit two. And the nice thing about this is every time you do something, it automatically adds. Over here, I can continue to expand and add more. Notice that once I go past, a hundred, it will automatically go through and set up our percentage and point value that you have to do that. Now there's some setup behind the scenes that we set up what our 90, 80, 70, and 60 you know, will do. But this is a great, we love that this feature is there. So we can add as many items as we want. Um, we've had, you know, and, and it doesn't matter the point value, um, it will just continue to do the, uh, the uh, calculations for us. It's where we put in all our different assignments. You know, this is where we put our outcomes. And then our boilerplate. Uh, this is great. We can build this once. We don't have to build it multiple, again. We can go in and make changes if we want. It'll globally affect the different things that we do. Once we've built out this particular uh, item, then what we need to do is we have to connect to our LMS. So this is behind the scenes, shaking of the hands. And so we just click on it. It's going to ask me to verify who I am. I say, yes, I'm me. Now what it does is it goes in and it looks in. We build all of our courses in a pre-production area. So we, we use that standard uh, rotation that a lot of computer programmers will do. We have a dev system where we develop, we play with, we see how things are go. When that's done, we roll it into our pre-production, which is the last final cleanest version of that particular course. And then we roll that into production, which is the course that the students see. And by being able to have that process, we're able to, to eliminate uh, changes that are, are problems that may flare up because we missed something. And then being able to roll that same content into multiple sections, it's a lot easier for us to process that. So once it's done, again, you can see that all of the different pre-production courses that we have, I can assign this to. So I've got a course I've called John Test. And so now I've clicked on it and you'll see here, it says John Test it's, it is linked to it now. I go ahead and I click on save. I want it to save, it does a timestamp. Last thing I do is I tell it to publish. And when I publish, it'll do a couple of things. One, it's gonna give me a special uh, HTML view of the item that I just created. It's also gonna give me the edited look of that. So if I wanna go back and make some edits, I can click on here. Also, it gives me the message that it was sent to Canvas. So if everything turns out right, I should be able to jump back over to my dashboard. I should be able to go into John test. I should be able to click on syllabus, sorry, wrong button. And there it is. A minute ago, there was nothing there and now it's here. And the reason why this is showing in this way is because I didn't put any data into this box. If I would have put data, then it would automatically close this uh, for us. So, so this is, uh, right now it's in, this is not something we created. This is something that um, you know, uh, Utah State University, which works very closely with Canvas, their headquarters is in Utah. Um, they worked very closely with Canvas building out this tool and a gentleman left uh, the university to open up his own business and he had uh, the rights to this particular tool. He is, this is now, this is still in beta. So we're kind of using it you know, wild, wild west here, uh, uh, hoping that it, it doesn't break on us, but there's gonna be a final version, should be out sometime this year. It's got some major updates. Um, it's been great. We've been working with the developer, giving that person insight and what we've been able to do and changes that we wanna do for the system. But this is a really great opportunity for us uh, it allows us to interact with Canvas a little bit better. There's a secondary tool that's called Syllabus Tracker, which once you put something into the Canvas, then you're able to go to what we call the Syllabus Tracker, and it will then bring up uh, previous terms and current terms um, syllabi, and you'll be able to look at that. 
and if I quickly go here and syllabus tracker, you'll see to all the colleges and retrieve data. Uh, what, so syllabus tracker here is showing us each one of the degree programs that we have. It tells us how many syllabi are, are currently running and active. So we have, there's 216 out of 238. So 90% of our syllabus pages have content. 22 do not have content, and so they're in red. And that could be because of different reasons. And then the system will break it down each individual program and show us the syllabi. So the ones with green check marks, this is great. So you hover it and it takes you a link to that syllabi. Then if you wanna go directly to the course, I can have this arrow and it takes me there. And the last thing is it tells me who the instructor is. So this is a great tool that our advisors are using now. Um, and let's see, this will show you multiple instructors. So a student calls up and say, hey, I'm really interested in taking um, LSTD 1003, but I really like a copy of the syllabus. Great, they all instructor, or our advisors come here, they, they can come over here, they can click on the few syllabus, they can download it. So they click on it, brings them up into a print mode, I can save it as a PDF, I can print it out as a Word document, send it to that student, and they have the information that they need for the syllabus. And so that's a great, tool and a great opportunity that we've taken something that is built into Canvas and able to um, exploit it and use it. And this is just one of many different things that uh, can be plugged into a Canvas site. And speaking about Canvas, let me jump back to So I'm gonna to talk to you about these web-based things. So, I mean, Google Drive, everybody likes Google. Google's a great integration with Canvas. It's a great integration with a lot of different things. And um, what we've been able to do is, let me go back to my dashboard and let me go, should be our test system. Okay, so this just shows you, this is an example of one of our templates that we use for our undergraduate uh, administrative leadership program. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to figure out a way of being able to make global changes, being able to do what we need so we don't have to touch every single class and go back. So we turn around and we created our Google Drive and inside our Google Drive, we have a Canvas folder. And inside the folder, we have our different programs. And so within each of our programs, we have common buttons. And so we build out all these common buttons, we put them here in the Google Drive, or we have specific programs, our graduate, and here are their different courses, um, and it shows their imagery like the ones here, this imagery, and all these button imagery. So what we've done is we've turned around, we, we built some tools, we created this, F, we threw it in our Google Drive, then we turn around and inside our Google Drive, we get the shareable link. Okay, now I bring up this word pad. So we turn around, we grab our shareable link, And all we need is this code here, okay? Because what we've done is inside all of our pages on our HTML editor, here is image. So it's going looking for a Google, it's going to our Google Drive, and here's that code right there. So if I don't like, or for example, when we had to change from going from the College of Liberal Studies to the College of Professional Continuing Studies, instead of going into every single course and having to change this header that showed up on all these different pages, all we had to do was go into our Google Drive, grab the new item, 
upload it into Google, and then it pushed it out, and then all of these globally changed. We can do the same thing for any of these buttons. We can do the same thing for um, the, the college to course title. We can even do the same thing for our side banner. And so that has really helped us. So when we're processing out hundreds of classes, um, we're able to do it at a very easy rate. We also use tabs in our course. And so if we just need to make some changes, again, we can go into our Google Drive, we can make our changes globally, and then they show up here. So it's amazing, we love Google, we love what it's able to do. On top of that, inside of, of uh, Canvas, there is a lot of uh, what they call is their, their API calls, their, their ability to write a particular JavaScript, goes in, grabs some content out of Canvas and back out or push and put content into those. Well, the community that I had showed you, a lot of people have written their own programs. And a lot of them use um, the Google, they use Google Sheets to do things. So for example, this is a great Google Sheet. This allows us to go in and we can update. I go to one place, I log in uh, with Canvas, I set up all of my API configuration so it'll work the way I need it to work, logs into our instance of Canvas, and then I can turn around and tell it to pull, I want you to go get, specifically from a course, this information. So it shows up here, and I can publish pages, I can turn off pages, I can go and open up, I can do discussion counts, and tell it to go through the system for this particular course, how many people have done this, how many have done, how many we've asked them to do, three per, three per discussion. All of this sits up in Google, pulls it out, easy place for us to go. And that's, that I can't say enough about how wonderful we've been able to integrate Google with Canvas. Yeah. The last thing is this Go Animate. We had our former uh, vice president of outreach uh, really liked to uh, get into the whole avatar stuff and the interactions. And so we found this company here called GoAnimate and that are really cool. You're allowed to, let's say create your own, I'll show you. There's different levels of area of environments that you can build jump into here, yes, enable my flash. They are getting ready to go to HTML5. So that's one thing that uh, I know this is all flash right now and once HTML5 program will, will eliminate that need, which will be great because then we'll have no problem crossing over from PC to Mac and so forth. But what it's doing here is, so I can choose uh, an office, I can choose different types of office locations and so forth. I then can turn around and I can add different characters if I wanted to, by dragging them in and dropping them in. Um, I can make them taller, shorter. Um, then I can have them do things. There's actions. So if I want them shopping, um, I can turn around and change what their avatar is doing. Um, no programming, folks. I just click on a lot of certain things. Also, the great thing about this is that you can add dialogue. So I can use my microphone on my computer. I can record something on my iPhone and upload the, file, the audio file onto this, and I can build out a nice interaction. So I'm going to show you some examples of what we have done to – where are you? There you are. All right. So – this was a last slide in a presentation that our vice president did. And so you.
So you can see that this was um, recorded elsewhere. We turn around, put it together, and um, built it out here, and then we we're able to export that, put that into a PowerPoint presentation, and go from there. Let me show you another example of what we've been able to do. We had an instructor, she's halfway done with this. Uh, there's no audio for this at this time, she hasn't recorded it, but let me play it so you get an idea of what she's done. So instead of you know a normal video of who she is and what she does, she thought she would try to put together uh, you know this type of thing. So um, if there was audio, you would hear her talk about these different things so you can see where she's from, what she likes to do, um, where she's been, where she graduated. So this is a lot of fun. This is a lot of great active uh, things that you can build out. And again, as I showed you earlier, it wasn't programming. It wasn't building anything. It was just literally plugging and playing, putting in these different things uh, that would work. And so this is a great tool. It's not too expensive, uh, but it is one of many different things out there uh, that can be used. And one last video to show is, yeah, this, you could do a classroom routine. This is not very long, uh, but you can do some great animation with this. So So I, I wanted to make sure that I gave plenty of time for people to ask uh, any type of question uh, about what they've seen or, or different types of technology or any questions about different ways we may have integrated things into Canvas and so forth. So let's take a look. don't think. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, mics are disabled. So if you have a question, uh, please type it in the chat box. Okay. John, while we're waiting to see yeah. if, if we have any questions, uh, you may have a slide on this, but in case someone has uh, wants to connect with you later on or, or watches this as a recording, what would be the, uh, the way to reach you? Ah, good point here. Let me make sure I will put it back on to, the slide here. There we go. And push this back up. Oops, hit the wrong button. There we are. So that's my uh, OU email address, and then that's my direct line into my office. Uh, and you'll be able to contact us. But this is a great, uh, technology's been fun. Technology's been great. I, I've been doing this for, I've been an instructor and dealing with online for over 15 years. Uh, I've been dealing, you know, I've been here at OU for three years before that. I was at the University of uh, Florida for 13 years. Um, there's so much advancements that are going on. I just came back from a conference where we were talking about virtual reality and how close that is for online learning and, and the ability to build out different virtual or even just three-dimensional modeling of different items. So we're going to take a look at some of our science courses, take a look at some of our criminal justice courses to see what else we can do uh, to enhance that online experience for our students. Okay, any questions come up? Doesn't look like we have any questions at this point. Um, uh, this was a, a great presentation, a lot of fun stuff in there. I, I really want to go out and, and make a little animation of myself now. So that's uh, <laughs> that's really a neat thing. So uh, thank you so much, John, for this uh, great presentation. And uh, you can all see there, uh, he uh, John has email and, and phone number up. So um, thank you uh, once again for, for joining us for this. And I hope to see everybody uh, over the next couple of weeks. Great, thank you all. Thank you, bye.